It's another week and another brand new episode here on the Granny Panty Podcast. I'm your host, Ruby Lynn, and I am so glad that you decided to tune in and join me this week. You can follow me, the host, at rubylynn.com. That's R-U-B-Y-L-Y-N-N-E.com. It's all things Ruby. Check it out. If you'd like to uh, check out the podcast, follow us on YouTube and anywhere that you can listen to podcasts, you can go to the Granny Panty Podcast podcast.com. I'm really excited for this week's guest. I had the pleasure of meeting her in person at Chicago Exotica earlier this year. She's someone that I've admired in this industry even before I was in the triple X industry. She just has such a friendly personality, really draws people in. I'm excited to listen to her thoughts on how the triple X industry has evolved since she started where it was mostly only studio work to now more control owning your own content on only fans and just how that has worked out for her so help me welcome tara patrick <laughs> Tara, I am so excited to have you on the show this week. I have admired your work for years and years and was so excited to actually have gotten to meet you in person earlier this year at Chicago Exotica. So thank you for being here. Thank you, Ruby, for having me. And it was, as we just spoke, it was so nice to finally meet you too. Thank you. Yeah. And it, you know, unfortunately, like the events are so wild. I've had quite a few guests on that I may be connected with at events, but you can't have a conversation. So I'm glad that you could come on and we can kind of chat about what you have going on and, and see how things have evolved for you. Now we can actually talk. We can bring yeah. everybody up to speed. We it's there's no loud pulsing music. People right. pulling us ten different directions. That is true. That is true. We did get a beautiful photo that night, though. That I love Anne. that photo. Yeah, it would be right. And the caption, she did it perfectly. You can't yeah. sit with us. <laughs> I will never. That will be forever. <laughs> I'll keep that forever. <laughs> So too fun. Well, so tell me, we'll just jump right in. You are doing appearances at all the Exoticas, correct? Correct. So I just came off from the Chicago show. That's such a great show. And that was actually our 50th show. So I'm saying our because I was one of the first, I was myself and Jenna Jameson that were actually at the very first Exotica show. So it was really cool to come back, do that show, and just have that surreal moment with Jay Handy, the owner of Exotica. We stood in the middle of the, the Chicago Convention Center in the floor, and we just saw this packed room, you wow. know, with all of with all of the industry. And it was, it was really, really nice. It was like, what do you call it? Like full circle. It was yes. just really cool. Yeah. Yes. How have you seen the show evolve since you were at the very first show? Was that first show in Chicago? Or? So the very first show was in Miami. Okay. And actually the next show on the agenda. So next week I'll be in Miami at uh, the second show of the year in uh, Miami. And then we go to New Jersey, which is another right for us and then we'll have a show in Washington DC but the first show was in Miami and the interesting thing about the Exotica Expo was this was back in 2006 okay and when I was approached to do the show you know I had come from just you know feature dancing mm -hmm. filming uh, movies for my own production company television at the time I hadn't, I'd done some expos like in Berlin, in France, in Australia, but I hadn't okay. done any in the US. So it was really interesting because we didn't know how it was going to go over. Mm -hmm. I think that you'll agree over the years, the stigma is still yeah. there. We still right. have to deal with that a little bit, you know, with the public, not necessarily our fans, but mm -hmm. I think just with the public in general, certain cities. Right been more welcomed than others, but yep. Miami was a blast. And so here we are 50 shows later. It went over really well in Miami. 
Wow, that is amazing. And so I'm sure the attendance has increased over the years. Chicago was my second Exotica. I went to New Jersey in 2021. Oh, okay. And so yeah, Chicago was, well, so far my favorite from the two. I just think there was a lot more people. I Just the vibe. Yes. I really enjoyed it. So and met so many cool people. Well, the attendance has steadily, has steadily risen, of course, over the years. But something I've also noticed is that the fans, they're, they've always been so excited to, to meet us and to mm-hmm. meet you. But it's kind of like when they see you in person, which is why when I'm talking to newer girls that come into the industry, one of mm-hmm. the things that I tell them is if you can make personal appearances at these shows, go. It's such a fantastic right. way to connect with your audience, to connect with your fans. They see you. They see the right. real you. And I think with the the industry, you know, changing so much mm-hmm. that it's, I don't want to say it's hard to stay relevant, but it's hard to kind of capture your fans' attention Mm -hmm. solely online. I like that the conventions still allow fans to come and actually see you, have a picture with you, buy your merchandise. It may seem like an old way. I'm using old in air quotes here um, (laughs) to kind of market yourself. It sounds like grassroots marketing, right? Like a convention, but it's the fans. I think they're coming out because for them, it's exciting too. They're like, wait, I can meet you in real life. This is so cool. Yes. I agree. I agree. Well, I'm fairly new to the industry and I love it. I love when people come up. I was, I think Chicago was definitely one of my first events that people came up and they're like, Oh, I follow you on Instagram. You know, and I'm like, that's so exciting. That's awesome. I listen to your show. So that is fun. Do you do any other conventions uh, besides Exotica? So it's funny. I actually uh, stopped filming back in 2006. So mm-hmm. I think that's 17 years. It's been it's been quite a while. And I haven't done any other shows really since then. Mm-hmm. I did a Comic-Con show in Mexico City two years ago. I'm slowly oh, getting back out there. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is the number one question I always get is like, what's life like after porn? It's like when you stop shooting, everybody thinks you just kind of go under this rock and that's it, you know, Mm -hmm. but I do love doing the conventions so much. Mm -hmm. I, a lot of the conventions I used to do aren't really even around anymore. And I don't know if it's post COVID I've noticed also feature dancing Ah. completely disappeared as well. So Mm -hmm. there hasn't really been, I think, I think we're, I'm hoping we're going back to that. We're going to start doing con- more conventions and more shows. And gotcha. I would absolutely love to get back and do that. Yes, That is cool. That is cool. Well, and you live in Italy. So the flights, I mean, you're flying back and forth. That's got to be a brutal travel day <laughs> or two days actually probably takes you. It's 15. It's 15 hours. Wow. But there was a period of time where I was coming back every few months because just, you know, family stuff. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I had a lot more work related stuff. But I think about it was actually right during lockdown. That was a good long break for me. I actually went back to school during that period of time. Wow. It really shifted my priorities as well, huge as well. But like you're saying, this last trip to Chicago, when I think about it, like you said, I'm pretty good. The first day I arrive, I get a good mm-hmm. night's sleep. The second day I'm up and running and ready to go, but it definitely takes, it definitely takes a toll on you. Yeah. You have to figure that in. So tell me about going to school. What are you studying? So I went back to school in 2020. It was mm-hmm. actually during lockdown. And it was funny, like the first month of lockdown, I was like, this is so awesome. I'm going to eat cereal. I was eating cereal in the middle of the night. I was just kind of like, because Italy went into a super hard lockdown. We were one of the first right. countries that we had cases, everything just shut down. And so mm-hmm. it was like crickets. And I spent the month at home and I had this, I know it's going to sound weird, but I had this kind of epiphany because mm-hmm. I was doing a lot of work online with my only fans, with my mm-hmm. website, I was starting to write again. 
And I said, there was kind of this uncertain period of time. And I Mm -hmm. said, what do I want to do if I don't go back to online working? You know, what do I want to do? And I've always wanted to go back and work in healthcare. So I went back and I went back to school to get my associates of science and chemistry. And I've been working as a nutritional chemist. And so, yeah. And it's, it's funny because I spent this whole last year working, Mm -hmm. but when I went back to Chicago Exotica, I had another one of those, oh my gosh, I'm back with all my people. Yeah. It's, It's such a strange thing to, so going back to the epiphany, I thought I could use this. This is what mm-hmm. I'd like to do for the adult industry. I would like to focus on maybe offering some resources within our community for nutrition, mm-hmm. healthcare. I think that this is something that's lacking in our industry. And when I got back to Exotica, you know, I had been working in a laboratory here in Italy. Gotcha. But I wasn't around my people. Right. And that's kind of the funny thing about back to life after porn, going into the civilian world, working a normal job, Mm -hmm. and then going back to the convention, right? I kind of was back and forth with like, I miss my people. These are my people. Right. My people, they understand me. So yeah, I like the atmosphere too. I kind of liken it to the fact that uh, I was involved in the swing lifestyle for about 15 years. And even though... Yeah. So 15 years, you know, up to present. But once I started doing triple X, I really didn't have time or the desire for the swing lifestyle, but I still go to the meet and greets every month because I love the people, the community. And And so I think of, you know, what you said is kind of about the same type of thing, just that openness and acceptance. And the transition, Mm -hmm. because you also realize that you sort of become two people. Mm -hmm. And that's the funny thing about triple X is, you know, I always look back on my career and I've always said, you know, I'm so proud of my body of work. I know that probably sounds like strange, but I mean, I I love love the business. Mm -hmm. You know, I did stumble a little bit in the beginning. I think we all have a story, you know, where we made some mistakes or just didn't, you know, we didn't know, you know, we only learned from experience, but I have nothing but gratitude for all of I think the freedom is the number one thing that you have in working in this industry. And so that's kind of why I'm proud of myself for Mm -hmm. going back and accomplishing a goal, something that I set for myself that I can Mm -hmm. fall back on and that I think can be useful for me in the future. I'm grateful for that experience. Mm -hmm. But I told myself, you know, I love the conventions. I've spent half my life in the industry. And it's really hard. I think that's the hardest part about transitioning out or leaving. Right, right. And the fans fans are just amazing. Well, and that what I think the fans too, are what keeps you going and motivates you, you know, knowing they still want to see your work as they well should. And you should be proud of all of your work. I mean, you've been amazing. Does your current, um, I call it day job or regular job, um, allow you the freedom to travel and have all that time off? Ironically, yes. Also because living here. So the interesting thing about how I came to live in Italy was uh, years ago, of course, I wanted to study, but Mm -hmm. I've been offered the chance to do a tour here, feature dancing. Oh. So there was a really nice uh, husband and wife team. They they were they're like a dance agency. They've been mm-hmm. around for many years. They were very established here in Europe. And he said to his wife at the time, he said, "I want to bring an American star out here. Mm-hmm. All of the clubs, all of the fans, they really want to to have an American star." And they keep asking for Tara Patrick. And so he didn't speak English. And of course, back then I didn't speak Italian. So uh-huh. I got this email from them. Her name is Alexa. And she, she kind of wrote with Google translate, you know, I could tell her and she was basically like, hi, you know, we're an agency. We would love to fly you out here. We would love to have you for a month, come feature dance in all the clubs. Fast forward to heck yeah, a month, all expenses paid, you know, and dance in all the clubs in Italy. I mean, it was such an incredible experience. And I remember leaving flying from Milan, going back to Los Angeles. And I remember feeling sad 
Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go home and I'm going to put my house on the market. I'm going to talk to my dad (laughs) because my dad's like my sounding word for everything. And I'm going to see what happens. And if it's meant to be, the stars will align and it's meant to be. And I, my dad said, you know, go, you're just go enjoy, go live your life. What do you have Mm -hmm. to lose? You can always come back. And so it's been 12 years and that's awesome. It's been an incredible experience. And, you know, there's some cultural nuances, of course. Right, right, right. But yeah, it's been such a fantastic experience and kind of like what you had said, having a job is something that allows me a lot of flexibility, but it's mm-hmm. also put me in a space where I, I don't feel like I've, I'm utilizing my skills the best that I could. I would like to bring them to the industry. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. I see. I see. Some I know that was a long answer, right? I'm sorry. I don't know if that made sense, but <laughs> no, it makes perfect sense. And I, I feel like it's foreshadowing of, you know, maybe a big project, a big um, announcement at some point for you. Does your lab job know about your career and and what you're doing now? Do they are they privy to all that? So it's it's kind of funny because I even I tried to be even really careful about tweeting or just discussing. You know, we always have to assert our boundaries. Like you right. said, you know, you've been in a different community before. Sometimes you like to keep, keep certain things separate. Mm-hmm. You don't want to infringe too much of your personal life into your professional life. And the funny thing is, there was an attempt actually from who actually I didn't even know it was the partner of someone that I had worked with. Oh. She and the funny thing is, she had said to him, "The girl you work with, oh, she has an OnlyFans." So she actually attempted to kind of twist me into this terrible person mm-hmm. because I had an OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. And when I got there, there was a few of the guys that were standing there that they were the younger ones because we were with two older physicians, and they said. And I thought, oh my God, thank God they don't know about the hardcore porn, right? Because in my mind, I thought they're just freaking out about me being topless on OnlyFans. Holy crap. If they ever Googled me, they would see, (laughs) they would see like all the bits, all the things, you know? So I was like, oh yeah, but you know, I mean, it's OnlyFans. It's so mainstream. And the guys were like, yeah, yeah, okay, that's cool. And I remember the, the two older doctors were like, who cares? Like, right. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny. I mean, I feel like it wasn't nice of her, I think to do that again. It's just, you know, like, I think that sometimes, and this is something that I've told girls that are coming into the industry. That's why Mm -hmm. you really have to be absolutely sure. Right. This is what you want to do. Right. My time was a time ago. I always say it was many, many years ago, even Mm -hmm. though you can Google me and still find a lot of things and I work online. So a lot of my work is still alive and relevant. It's not Mm -hmm. as in your face. I'm not number one on Pornhub. I'm not as out there, but I can't scrub the internet. No. Once it's on the internet, it's there forever. Forever. And so I tell that's that's something that I advise a lot of people that are considering Mm -hmm. coming into the industry is really understand the effect that this could have on your professional future life. If you want to go to school, Mm -hmm. if you want to get into a relationship. Right. I did the opposite of you. So I was a social worker and, and did triple X as the, as a secret for two and a half years. Nobody knew. (laughs) And nobody at my work knew. I had one girlfriend who was I was personal friends with, and we happened to both work at the same company. She knew, but we were in different departments. But oh. yeah, I always I, and I always was aware that that could happen. Like they could find out, and they never did. I quit that job April of last year to work triple X full time. Oh, okay. <laughs> And so now a couple of them do know they found my podcast, you know, on TikTok and stuff. But I was just thinking about the, it was funny because you and I did the swap thing. (laughs) I had medical first and then went to triple X. So do you think though, now it's my time to ask you a question. No, I'm just, yeah, let's go for it. Do you think? If you would have been found out, do you think it would have affected your position? Like looking back on maybe the people that you worked with, were they kind of like, did you have a close knit work circle or do you think it would have affected you in a negative way? 
so I think that my my coworkers who are on the same level doing the same position as me, I don't know that it would have bothered them so much. Um, I think as a company, I worked for a medical insurance company, like a Medicaid provider. And so I do think if they had found out, I probably would have been let go. And I was fine with that. I mean, the reason I got into this in the beginning was to make more money than I was making as a social worker. (laughs) I'm a rebel. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. The system. So tell me how your uh, business has evolved. So back when you started, it was just, you know, primarily studio work. And then as the internet evolves and the pandemic and OnlyFans, tell me what your current, I guess, business model is. You're on OnlyFans and you do live webcam, correct? I do, correct. Okay. So I've actually had my official website, uh, which is terrapatrick.com. I've had it since 1999. Wow. And there's a ton of, of course, vintage, classic, you know, yeah. content on there. I owned uh, my own production studio from 2000 to 2006. And mm-hmm. I shot, uh, you know, a lot of the, a lot of stars that are still active today. I have a pretty big content library close to about 4,000 titles. So they're all on my website. That's amazing. Yeah. And you know, it was, it was so, you know, it's, it's funny. I would have to say back then. And also I was uh, with vivid, I was under contract Mm -hmm. with vivid video. So that was a really wonderful experience for me because I got to work with, you know, just a great group of talent and, Mm -hmm directors and shot a lot of beautiful films. My favorite films, I, I worked with um, Chi Chi LaRue. He was just oh, all nice. about glamour and beauty. And, you know, like I was saying earlier, I look back on so much of my mm-hmm. work and it's just mm-hmm. it was fun. You know, he was like, we're going to glue diamonds all over your face. Okay. Now we're going to shoot the hardcore. Like it, it was just a really beautiful time. That is fun. Um, I've shot for Playboy, Penthouse, mm-hmm. of course, all the magazines, but mm-hmm. In 2006, when I shot my last scene, I remember thinking, I want to just go out like this. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, what's, uh, leave them wanting more, I guess. You know, I said, I just want to end on a high note. Um, I'm proud of everything that I've done so far. Mm -hmm. I own it all. It's on my website. And if I want to license it later, that I then I can. Mm-hmm. I started doing live webcam in 2013. Okay. Because there was about a six-year period of time where, like I said, I was feature dancing, mm-hmm. I was traveling. You get burnt out on that too. Oh, yeah. And that's just kind of something that I feel like in this industry, you really have to find your sweet spot mm-hmm. when you're done and you need to take a break from dancing, it's time to find another revenue stream. And webcamming, live webcam just kind of kicked in and allowed me to yeah. stay home, but allowed me to still interact with my fans. Right. Then I could record the content, put it on my website. It's like, I really saw this moment of just trying to, I guess, do as many revenue streams as I could comfortably. Right. right. I remember hearing this funny saying about how, you know, in Hollywood, I remember watching some show and they were like, Sandra Bullock, she's, she's back, you know, from her hiatus. And I'm like, she just won an Oscar. Like it was three months and they already had her like gone and back from her hiatus. And I thought that's really how adult works the same way. You can Mm -hmm. be gone for a month and bam, lose all of your subscribers in that month. We talk about the work-life balance, but Mm -hmm. man you've really got to keep. You do. Hustling. You do. You do. And uh, OnlyFans, you mentioned earlier, you are on OnlyFans. How how do you run your fan site? I mean, do you run it all? Do you have help with it? No, I've never had help. And you know, the funny thing, I barely even do social media. That's kind of the one thing I feel like I really neglected. I never Mm -hmm. popped on social media. I never got verified. I never did a lot of that work. Uh And yes, there were some companies that approached me early on when I first went on OnlyFans that were like, let us manage everything for you. And I said, Mm -hmm. 
that would suck the joy out for me, believe right. it or not. Because, right. you know, going back to what you and I discussed a little off camera earlier, I gave a part of my, I don't want to say a part of myself away early on in my career, but I did sign a contract with a management company. And that was a mm-hmm. hard lesson for me to learn because I realized that I wasn't in control. Yep. And I, after that, it took me two years of litigation to get out of it. And that wow. was mentally and physically brutal. Mm-hmm. And it really affected uh, my relationship in the industry early on because people really take sides. Right. Um, you know, in one month, I was terminated from all these contracts that I worked oh my really gosh. hard to build and you're really ostracized, you know, when you speak out and go against, you know, people who are bigger than you. So I said, never again, I'm never going to relinquish control. I'm going to learn as much as I can. I'm going to do it myself. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you get to that point and it's no disrespect to people who do use management and who, who work well with it. But for me personally, I told myself if I got to that point, where I didn't want to open my phone and see my OnlyFans on my mm-hmm. website, it's time to go. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. Go. Like if I have to fake the funk, it's time to go. No, I get it. And that's part of, to the evolution that I had alluded to of, you know, in, in the beginning or in the past, you didn't own your content. You were shooting for studios or you were under contract. And now you can own everything and have control over what you have. And Absolutely. that's one reason I actually, I've shot for one studio uh, because I wanted to have that experience, but I haven't shot for many studios because my stuff is out there. Even that one, you know, I did four videos <laughs> for a studio. Oh, and, companies. Yeah. And for this company and that content is out there because people go out and pirate it. My brand at scan every week is 90% of those four scenes, <laughs> you wow. know, so I do, I'm like you, I like that we can own our content, have control over where it's at. Well, so it gets think, pirated to some degree, but you know, but not as, I think not as out of control right. as it does with the big studios and kind of what you alluded to earlier with only fans. I think that only fans listen, as much as people want to chop it up and throw it in, you know, the, the, the bin only fans, I think proved mm-hmm. that the fans have wanted direct access to us right. all along, all right. along. This is what they've wanted. They've wanted to shoot what they've asked. You know, we can say, Hey, what do you want us to shoot? It gives us complete control mm-hmm. over you know, like you said, not only our content, but you know, our brands, I mean, right. there comes a point in time you know, I'm never going to shoot hardcore. It's been, it's been 17 years since I have shot hardcore. That ship has sailed. Do fans ask me all the time? Yes. But I've always said, you know, when you open your legs, you open the door. That's what brings them in. But mm-hmm. it's really who you are that keeps your fans. With right. You. I right. have such great, I have such a great loyal fan base that has stayed with me all of these years. I mean, some of them probably are like, I'm going to go look at your vintage stuff because, right. you know, I want to, I want to see you that way. And that's fine too. Yep. But again, you, as you evolve as a performer, as a person, this, these are the facets of your personality, mm-hmm. of course, within your boundaries that, you know, that's the reason why your fans stay and that's why they subscribe. And yeah. I think for me, that's been a lot of why I like doing my only fans is because mm-hmm. I just have these great relationships with my fans. Yeah. You, and you're just so nice and personable. And so how can they not love you? <laughs> oh, there's a few. I, I, you know, you, you're the, you're the most beautiful, fabulous woman, right? Until you're not. And then you will do something they say, and then they're like, I hate you. And you're like, yeah. till you say no, or you, say you, no. Know, <laughs> you got to tip me if you're going to send that dick pic, dude, <laughs> and then they're, then they hate you. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. Going forward, uh, if you could be remembered for one thing, what is that one thing that you want to be remembered for at the end, end of your lifetime, looking back? It's always the hard question at the end where you're like, hmm. Hmm, I know. We got to, we got to keep it guessing here. (laughs) You're right. Got it. The, the. 
everything's the computer's working up here. I think more than anything, you know, looking looking backwards and forwards in life mm-hmm. is my integrity has always been really, really important to me. Mm-hmm. And of course I've made some mistakes, bad decisions along the way, but I've really always tried to hold myself with, you know, integrity. I've always mm-hmm. tried to do the right thing. I've always tried to, of course, put my and my family's best interests right. first, but I do believe you can do that ethically. Mm-hmm. I've heard a lot of times that, you know, in business, you always have to be the one to get over on somebody else or the industry is really cutthroat and this and that and this and that. But I've always said, you know, I don't, I don't really feel that way. I, I do what makes me comfortable and happy. I'm not afraid to say no. I don't have any regrets. And if I can be remembered, you know, like you asked, it would just be that you know, I was honest and yeah. I didn't hurt anybody. I don't think <laughs> that's awesome. Didn't steal that's, from anybody. That is great. And I, I believe you'll be remembered for all of that and more. So <laughs> I, I hope so. You know, I feel that it, it is interesting going back to meeting you at the Exotica show. It's the best and the worst place because mm-hmm. you're like, yeah, you get to give everybody a hug. My husband, actually, he's Italian and he had no idea who I was. He didn't know anything about the adult industry. And his first Exotica was the Miami Beach show in oh 2018. Gosh. And Lisa Ann, she's so funny. She said, okay, Alberto, it's like Exotica. How do I describe Exotica? It's like a porno garage sale. Yes. And so he, he was like, what's a garage sale? You know, like there's still some of these American references that he was like, garage sale. Lisa goes, okay, no, no, no. It's like porno summer camp. Like, ah. you know, it's a mix of like, we, we, we see our old friends and right. we meet new ones. And so yeah. it's nice to hug a lot of my colleagues and peers and friends that I've known for so many years, mm-hmm. but I get to meet a new generation and a new group of new talent and mm-hmm. It's, it's really cool. I mean, this is why I, I'm not ready to hang up the panties, the thong, the granny panties just yet, but (laughs) I still love the show so much. And Mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And what booth are you at, at the Exoticas? Does that change from show to show or? So I will be at the loyal fans of our sponsors of the loyal fans spotlight booth. I was like, probably the date I'm going to get wrong. I hope not. Is it? 14, 15, 16, that weekend, I think, of July. It's next weekend. Right. In yes, Miami that's Beach. correct. That's correct. Yes. So, and it's and Miami, then, so hoping to get a little, little tan. <laughs> and then New Jersey is actually like November 3 through 5, I think, this year. Right? November? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. And then before we go, you have mentioned information that you tell new talent coming into the industry, but what do you think is the most important thing? Say that I just started, well, I kind of have only been in three and a half years, but what is your best piece of advice? (laughs) I know, I know. Besides don't get a management company, no. (laughs) Well, well, you know, a few things. One is of course, assert your boundaries. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Trust your gut instinct and assert your boundaries. There is absolutely nothing worth compromising your health over. Right. You know, if something doesn't feel right, take a minute, think Mm -hmm. about it. You know, don't let a temporary impulsive decision, you know, or thought make a permanent decision. I've always said that, you know, take your time and go with your gut instinct. And I've always Mm -hmm. also always said, which was my mistake coming into the industry early is to, to find a trusted person, hopefully, Mm -hmm. you know, a lawyer, don't sign any contracts, don't sign anything without having someone you trust, look over it, or Mm -hmm. an attorney look over it, you know, so many times, and this is just all facets of the industry, we Mm -hmm. get ourselves sucked into a situation that, you know, is going to be either very expensive, emotionally, Mm -hmm. or financially to get Mm -hmm. out of and That's true. Believe in yourself. You can do more than you think you can. You know, I think coming into right. the business, it's intimidating. We feel like we have to know everything right off the bat. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we learn as we go. So don't be hard on yourself. Trust your instincts. Don't sign anything. 
<laughs> that is great advice. Great advice. And, and, you know, technically it's basic, but sometimes we forget about that or, you know, we're in a situation where we're kind of pressured to do something. So very well, good I advice. Feel like the difference with the adult industry too is, you know, we talk about all facets of entertainment. Something that's mm-hmm. very different about the adult industry, you know, from the performer side is that we really are, we're exposed in a very different mm-hmm. way. There's a lot mm-hmm. of vulnerability there. You know, you've heard people, I say civilians, these are our normal friends, right? That say, oh my gosh, I woke up and I had this crazy dream where I like woke up and I was naked in the middle of a stadium. I'm like, been there. Yeah. I've been naked on a stage. You know, you know how vulnerable you feel. Your whole mm-hmm. entire body is exposed right. for people to see, to judge. You know, you really open yourself up to a lot. And I think that a lot of the mental stability that you think you have or the common sense that you have sort of goes out the window because yeah. you're naked, you're vulnerable, you're, you know, you're doing something that's mm-hmm. exciting and kind of taboo. And there's just so many things that go through your mind. I can remember my first shoot. I don't know. I mean, do you remember being nervous? I was so terrified. Yeah. I mean, my first collab that I shot with another performer, not my partner, was uh, actually last year. So May of 22. So wow, wow, really recent. Yeah. So I've only been shooting collabs a little over a year. But yes, I was very nervous for a whole bunch of different reasons because my partner's my videographer. So it's like, okay, what is he thinking? What am I thinking? It's just like, ah. You can't even enjoy yourself. You're like, wait a minute, I'm not, you know, there's the random things that go through your head, yes. that, you know, that again, that other people just wouldn't, you know, wouldn't even imagine. But so that's why I think that, like you said, even though it may be common sense, it kind of goes yeah. out the window when you're, you're hyper focused on, right, right. you know, hypotheticals, even how is this going to come out? What's this going to look like? What if everybody hates it? I mean, I know I had an emotional hangover the next day just from like, well, you know, did everything Attention. look right? <laughs> did my butt look okay? Did my, <laughs> what about this angle? <laughs> so, yes. Well, excellent advice. Excellent advice. So remind everybody where they can find your content, both vintage and new stuff. Classic. I love saying vintage. Uh, so my official website is terrapatrick.com and I'm also on OnlyFans at OnlyFans.com slash Terrapatrick. Okay. And yeah, those are my two preferred sites, of course. And I also wrote a memoir uh, back in 2009 called Sinner Takes All. Oh. It's uh, my personal memoir. You can get it on Amazon and also okay. there's a link on my website. So if you feel like reading. And if I Definitely. see you in New Jersey, I will... Absolutely, gift you a signed copy. Oh, I'd be awesome. honored if you read it. So, I would love that. Yeah, I'm hoping to get to New Jersey. Look, I'm looking for a sponsor. So, the booth Ooh, that I was enough. used to appear at is no more. So, well, that's all we'll say about that. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Um, but yes, well, thank you again because I know it's late for you. Thank you so much for being on the show. I love getting to know you better. Thank you. And um, I hope I get to see you at New Jersey. Good luck uh, in your everything you're doing right now. And thanks for letting us know. Thank you very much, Ruby. Thank you for having me. It was a real pleasure to talk to you. Hey, 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 hey.